Crim 2 Morning News begins now. It is 7 a.m. on our Tuesday morning. We are tracking breaking news from central Washington. Wind is fueling a wildfire in Grant County. That fire has now passed Beverly Burke Road and overnight it exploded in size. The Grant County Public Information Officer Kyle Foreman says that fire has scorched upwards of 3,500 acres, but right now it's 0% contained. And we're told level two evacuations are in place for Beverly Burke Road, Shawana, and Wanapum Village. That means people need to be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Authorities say the fire is threatening about 75 homes in that area. Level one evacuation notices are in place near Smyrna as well. And level one means that people just need to be aware of what's going on around them. So thank you so much for being with us on Creme 2 News on the CW22. I'm Jen York. And I'm Taylor Vito. We have a map to show you. The level two evacuations in Grant County cover the area between Highway 26 and 243. That's the red area you see marked on your screen there. The Grant County Sheriff's Office says they have notified all people in the area, but they are still urging many people nearby to be aware and be cautious. And this morning, Public Information Officer Kyle Foreman has been joining us throughout the morning. Kyle, you're joining us now on the phone again. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for helping us out with this. Uh, the fire continues to grow, and uh, it's right now estimated at 3,500 acres. We do have reports that there were a couple outbuildings that may have been lost overnight. We're going to verify those now that we have the benefit of daylight. Uh, overnight crews from all across, <clears throat> pardon me, all across Grant County were on the scene trying to keep the fire in check, which is very difficult to do uh, at night. Uh, throughout the morning, we're expecting the arrival of state mobilized resources as well as an incident management team to take over for the very weary firefighters who've been on the fire line all night long. So level two evacuation notices continue to be for Beverly, Shawana, and uh, for the Wanapum Village in Grant County, and a level one evacuation notice for the community of Smyrna, which is down Lower Crab Creek Road. And Lower Crab Creek Road is the only roadway which is closed right now. State routes 243 and 26 are open, guys. And Kyle, have any uh, aircraft arrived on scene yet? I know earlier you were mentioning helicopters were gonna be uh, playing a factor today in fighting that fire. So we know that we have a dispatch order in, a resource order in for uh, air resources. They should be arriving throughout the morning. Uh, and so people need to, uh, we'll be, we'll be seeing those aircraft arrive. Also, if you're a hobbyist and uh, you have a drone, we ask you to keep your drone out of the air. Uh, we cannot fly helicopters if you have a drone up. So if you are uh, thinking about doing that, uh, we really ask you don't do that because it puts the aircraft at risk. And Kyle, one more thing we want to mention. I saw you guys were talking about this online. I know in these situations, a lot of people who are watching wanting to know if they can help. Uh, you know, generosity is always so apparent in these situations. Are these guys okay in terms of water donations or that kind of thing? So state mobilized fire resources come uh, prepared with all the equipment they need, their drinking water, their clothing. Uh, they come ready to do the job. And so uh, people uh, certainly, we, we appreciate everyone's generosity and expressions of generosity, but uh, we do not need any resources right now from the public. Certainly monitor our social media feeds if there are any uh, resource requests from the public. But as of right now, we do not have any, and, and everything seems to be going okay as far as supplies for the firefighters. I think you goes a long way in those situations, of course, too. <laughs> and Kyle, at it one point, afford. there were level three evacuations in place. Those have since been downgraded, but level three means get out, leave now. Can you talk to us about the response overnight? Because this fire sparked basically when the sun was down. It did. It started just about nine o'clock. Uh, certainly people were probably getting ready to go to bed. Uh, we did, uh, whenever we do a level two or level three evacuation, we send deputies door to door so they can notify homeowners directly, but we also use our uh, electronic tools. So we send them electronic mass notifications. We begin posting information on social media because we want to have the broadest reach that we can possibly have when warning people to get, uh, when there's a hazard which may impact them. All right, Kyle, thank you again so much for joining us on the phone this morning, bringing us some updated information. Of course, uh, you're so great about letting us know about any updates. If people at home on the go want to find updates, where can they find those? We uh, have an extensive use of social media, so they can go on Facebook or Twitter. Our handle on both of those social media platforms is Grant Co. Sheriff, G-R-A-N-T-C-O Sheriff, and they can follow the information on there. 
All right, Kyle, again, thank you so much, the Public Information Officer for Grant County. We appreciate your time. And uh, we want to go to Krim 2's Kira Alfalon. We just saw her there a moment ago. She's on scene with the latest. Kira, what are you seeing? Yes, good morning. Well, we just pulled off of State Route 26 again. This is M Road where you can see some homes in the background with all that heavy smoke that you're seeing in the air. Really intense with the sun, especially behind it. You can really smell the smell of smoke throughout the air as that fire continues to burn heard from Kyle Foreman with the Grant County Sheriff's Office is that it is now to 3,500 acres is what they're estimating at this time. So these are some of the homes out here uh, near the smoke that are probably in uh, level two evacuation levels right now. Of course, level two again means be ready and packed and prepared to go. Level one, some areas are in level one evacuations, which basically means you should just be aware of the situation that this is going on. Definitely a good idea. As Kyle Foreman said, you can always go to uh, Grant County Sheriff Facebook page or the Twitter page to stay up to date on what's going on out here. But a lot of smoke out here, as you can see right now, we're not really feeling that heavy wind like we were earlier. You can definitely feel the heat as we got closer to the fire, though, with the sun uh, continuing to uh, raise up this morning as well. So this is a scene that we're seeing right now. Lots of heavy smoke. We hope to get closer to the fire and come back to you in a couple minutes or so. We're hoping to see where all the firefighters are, but we hear that there are a lot of resources here. So they're doing what they can to battle this fire right now. I'll send it back to you. Okay, Kiera, obviously that area pretty rural cell service, probably not the best, hence why you're seeing uh, the shot kind of get a little glitchy there at some points. But mm -hmm. Kiera, we certainly appreciate that. With that, we want to send things over to Evan Nurani in the Weather Center. And Evan, we're talking winds, I guess. Uh, how's Mother Nature going to be playing a role today? Yeah, so uh, as we mentioned overnight, we saw that fire really increase in size because of high winds, strong winds around the area, especially around central Washington. Today's going to be another day of windy conditions outside, and we're expecting those to grow into tomorrow, which means your Tuesday and your Wednesday both involve a decent amount of it. Take a look at the wind gusts over the next several hours. We're expecting those to jump up to about 17 miles an hour. This is in Spokane specifically, but really across the board, we are expecting wind speeds to be pretty decent. Now, right now, you can see around the Moses Lake area, Othello area, which is the closest monitor that we have of it, pretty calm winds. In Spokane, 9 mile an hour sustained winds, Pullman 13. The thing is, these fluctuate and typically rise as the afternoon comes around. So that's when we're expecting these numbers to increase. We are also expecting dry conditions today with above average temperatures, which does not help out with those fire concerns. Afternoon highs should be in the upper 70s across eastern Washington. Across areas of central Washington, in Grant County, we're looking at mid 80 degree temperatures, which is still about 10 to 15 degrees above average for today and outside satellite radar indicating a lack of activity overall. So uh, no real uh, threat of precipitation until we get to your Thursday and Friday. So we've still got a good uh, time constraint on that. But for now, uh, we're continuing to track these conditions live and you can, of course, get details over on our website at creme.com. Now it's 7.08, uh, we will get a check of traffic. Right now, things are looking pretty smooth across area roadways. If we see anything pop up, we will let you know. Jenna Taylor, back to you. Evan, thank you. 7.08 now on our Tuesday morning. A two-year-old boy from Montana is safe this morning following an Amber Alert. It was canceled shortly after it was issued yesterday. The boy pictured on the right of your screen there was believed to be with his mother when the alert was issued, but authorities say the mother has a history of mental health issues. According to a sheriff's office in Montana, the mother took her son and left the state late Sunday night. They were both found safe in Federal Way, Washington. Well, closer to home, a Spokane Valley woman who survived being stabbed more than 60 times now believes she's being scammed out of donations by someone she knows. Now, people who donated are asking how to report the fraud. The fact that yes, people saw this opportunity and took advantage of us. You know, it's, it's sad. <laughs> Missy Robertson says a friend from high school started online fundraisers. Donors contributed about $1,200. She says she has not received any of that. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office says Robertson should report the fraud to get it on record so that can initiate an investigation. And if you sent donations to her fundraiser accounts, the Better Business Bureau has a few suggestions on what to do from here. It first encourages donating only to people you know. This helps ensure that the funds get to the person directly. In Robertson's 
Facebook fundraiser, you would go to Facebook's Help Center and search Report Fundraiser Fraud. You will then be prompted to provide documentation. The BBB also suggests using the site Give.org to confirm the credibility of the next charity or cause you want to donate to. Well, days after 12 people were killed in a shooting in Virginia Beach, a group of students from Spokane went to the city to honor those who lost their lives. A group from St. Thomas More Catholic School in North Spokane was in Virginia for an annual trip when the shooting happened. Rather than taking their typical trip to the coast, they instead hosted a prayer vigil. We have to teach them a way to still be strong, to still be hopeful, and know that they can help. With flowers and signs in hand, the 8th grade students paused to pray for the victims of the Municipal Center shooting. One at a time, they read each victim's name out loud. It's a memorial from students across the country to remind the Virginia Beach community the nation is with them. It is coming up on 7-Eleven now. Spokane students will soon have a new way to access summer fun. Yeah, the city is launching a pilot program to provide free activities to students. With the Spokane Youth Card, students can enjoy free swimming at the city's six pools. They can get involved in summer reading programs at the library and ride STA buses for free. Other perks include free admission and skate rentals at the Skate Ribbon at Riverfront Park. So here is how to get one. Starting next Thursday, June 13th, the students in K-12 through who live within city limits can check the cards at any Spokane Public Library branch. The cards are valid until September 15th. Be sure to bring your youth Spokane Public Library card or Spokane Public School student ID number to get a card. Well, the Park Bench Cafe in Manitou Park just opened its doors. At the cafe, you can enjoy a variety of pastries from Rockwood Bakery, wraps, salads, and of course, coffee. The Rockwood Bakery quiche is also very delicious. That is good. I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> the cafe is located inside the park. They are open every day. For more information on the hours, you can head to our website at crim.com. Always a treat getting to the park and having tasty goods. A little snack. Yeah. You can enjoy the flowers. Go for a little walk. Amen. <laughs> 7 12 now. Well, every day, Matt Granite is figuratively watching out for your wallet. With today's deal, he is taking his approach a little more literal.